Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I hope you're all having a good day. Today is February, Tuesday, uh, the 15th. Uh, my name is Ara Navarrete, I'm the program director for the Indaki Spartan Student Research Center, and I'm really excited to be here with all of you uh, via, uh, via web to talk a little bit about financial aid and the California DREAM Act. Um, today, we're going to be spending some time to talk about the California DREAM Act application and the resources that are available here at San Jose State, um, along with identifying key, uh, key deadlines and resources for you to help complete this application. Um, as the March 2nd deadline um, approaches, we want to make sure that folks have the resources and the information readily available to be able to fill out the application on time and in order to be able to receive the most financial aid as possible. Um, so with us today, we have Lucy Serrato Lager, who is the Associate Director of the Financial Aid and Scholarship Office. Um, and she's collaborating with us, uh, through, you know, she's been with us throughout the year. Um, aside from the uh, Associate Director of Financial Aid, she is also the liaison for the Andaki Spartan Student Resource Center. And what that means is that Lucy has worked really closely together, uh, really closely with our center uh, for several years now. And she has been the point of contact for our center along for our students. Um, with, around any questions related to the California DREAM Act and also resources, financial aid resources for undocumented students, regardless of AB 540 or social security no, uh, number status. And so I'm really excited to introduce her today and I will let her uh, go ahead and uh, share a little bit about herself and start us off in this presentation. Um, and actually, before I let her jump in, I do want to remind folks that this uh, presentation is going to be posted online at the Andalki Spartan Student Research Center webpage, um, and it's also going to be on our YouTube channel. So uh, we'll include this information in the chat, um, as well as a follow up email to students who have registered um, or who would like to reach out to us directly. Um, and so with that, I'll go ahead and pass it over to Lucy. Hi, sorry, as Anna indicated, my name is Lucy Sarato Lager. I am one of the associate directors here in the Financial Aid and Scholarship Office. Um, I have been working with the Undocumented Spartan Resource Center for about five, six years, somewhere around there. Um, I have been doing financial aid pretty much all my life for about 20 some odd years. Um, but I am very excited to be working with Anna and the team. And without further ado, we will go on to speaking about financial aid. So about financial aid. So our offices provide not only financial aid, which students usually tend to think grants, but we also provide work study and loans as part of financial aid. We also have scholarships here in our office for all students, and we also provide financial literacy. Um, our lead team and Undocu Ally members here in our office, Carolyn Gould is the other associate director, Neelam Kashwani and Anthony Bancor are both, both of our leads. Um, so if you ever need anything, please feel free to reach out to any of us. Ryan, Poya, Thu, and Nock are um, Undocu Allies who have gone through the training. They're very familiar with the entire process. So if you ever need anything, please feel free to reach out to any one of us. Okay, so where should your financial aid be now? So as of right now, you should have completed the California Dream Act application, which is due March 2nd. If you haven't done so, then please make sure to do that as soon as possible. The earlier, the better, because if you wait to March 2nd and then there's issues and whatnot, then um, you may not have enough time to correct any issues. If you are aware with the California Dream Act, you can submit it once. And then you need to wait 24 hours before you can resubmit it. Um, so the earlier you get it done, um, the better it is. Um, if you have submitted it already, you will receive a message from our office by the end of February, letting you know um, that we have received it and what your next steps are. About a third, a third of our students have to submit additional documents for our office. This process is called verification, where um, we have to verify the information that was submitted on the DREAM Act matches with that on the tax information. So these documents are due on April 29th this year. Generally, it's towards the end of April. So make sure to submit those also. 
So these are very important as these deadlines, the March 2nd and the April 29th deadline, play a role in determining what type of aid you can get, you will receive um, for the term, for the year. Okay. Um, first time students will be awarded in early April and then continuing students will receive their award in early July. The reason for the difference in awarding cycle is that we wait to receive notification from the California Student Aid Commission on some aid eligibility for continuing students. So this is why continuing students get awarded later. So a couple of things to look out for in when completing your dream app. The main thing is you wanna make sure that the name that you are using on the dream app matches with that on the SJSU record. You want to make sure that on both applications you're losing, using your legal name. So for example, in my SJSU records, if I am just Lucy Sarato and in the dream app, I am Lucy Sarato Lager, then there will be a disconnect. And then it's not until it takes, it's a manual import of these records, which could delay um, us bringing in your record and you're receiving your award. So really double check, make sure that the names match exactly the same. Um, for example, if you have a second or third last name, like in my case, I use that as my middle name. Middle names don't really matter, but if it, your social security card, that is part of your last name, then you want to use it exactly the way it is um, in your legal documents, okay? Um, as far as your parents' income, you want to make sure to that your parents file taxes if they are above the income ceiling, even if they don't have a social security number. Okay, for that, they would need to request an I-10 number and then file their taxes. However, if at this point they have not filed taxes for 2020, then they can you can still complete the DREAM app using estimated taxes. Okay, so just because you haven't filed taxes doesn't mean that you, you or your parents can't complete the application. You can still complete it, just use estimates. If you are considered independent, and keep in mind that the Dream Map has a set of questions which dictate whether you are considered dependent or independent. Um, if you are considered independent, then you may need to submit what's called a non-tax filing letter from the IRS, which indicates that you did not file taxes if that is the case. Okay. Um, so parents are required to file taxes for those students who are considered dependent students. And again, the DREAM Act determines whether a student, the D DREAM Act application determines whether a student is dependent or independent. It is not based on how the taxes are submitted, okay? And the last little tip, and probably the most important, is keep in mind that DACA does not require is not required at all to receive financial aid. Okay. In order to receive state aid, you do not have to have a DACA status. Okay. You have to meet other requirements, but DACA is not one of them at all. Okay. So the different types of grants, and this is where those deadlines that I talked about earlier come into play. So for the state university grant, your expected family contribution has to be less than 5,000. When you complete your application, it gives you um, what's called an expected family contribution, also known as an EFC. Okay, if a number is less than 5,000, including zero, then you are eligible for the grant, assuming that you also submitted the application and the deadlines by the March 2nd and April 29th deadline. So you really want to make sure that you submit all your documents as soon as possible um, and that you complete your application also. So for Cal Grant A and B in Cal Grant B subsistence, so that is determined by the California Student Aid Commission, and it is based on income ceiling and GPA. For, the, for this one, you also must have a March 2nd um, application submission date. You want, this is when it becomes really important if somebody else is determining the eligibility, such as CSAC, California Student Aid Commission, then you want to make sure to really submit your document by that deadline. Um, you cannot, sorry, then I'll, I'll go back to it. EOP, so for EOP, 
I believe the deadline was January 31st to apply for EOP. If you are admitted into the EOP program, then you can, and you, your EFC is less than 5,000, then you may receive the EOP grant, okay? If you do have the EOP grant on your um, award, it'll show as SEOP, which is the same as EOP. Yeah. The middle class scholarship, um, that is also determined by the California Student Aid Commission. It is basically for students of middle income. The state university grant, Cal grant, and middle class scholarship cannot be combined. So for example, if you receive a Cal Grant A, then you will not receive a state university grant. The same applies if you receive a middle-class scholarship, then you will not receive a state university grant or a Cal Grant. What generally happens is we will give the student whichever aid they receive, whichever grant they will be receiving the most fund from. For example, we'll probably give Cal Grant B first, um, and then state university grant and middle class scholarship would be the last as it usually offers the least amount of payment for a student. Um, other than the grants, there's also loans and this new California Dream Act incentive grant. So the California Dream Loan is available for both undergrad and graduate students. It is a loan, so it does have to be repaid. Um, we do receive a very limited amount of funds for this. So you want to make sure if you don't have it on your award and you are interested, please reach out to our office, reach out to me. And if we do have funds available, then we can add it to your account. But it is um, very limited um, funds that we get. We usually end up awarding about 30, 40 students an academic year when, before we run out of funds. Um, for the Cal Grant Incentive Grant, this is a very new grant. Um, it is pretty much eligible for students who are, who are Cal Grant B recipients. Um, they must, you must do 150 hours of community service. There is a whole contract that gets done before those 150 hours begin. And then you can receive up to 1500 a term after you complete the 150 hours of community service or volunteer hours. Okay. Scholarships are definitely the way to go for scholarships. Currently, we have the Spartan Scholarship application open. This is open now and will be open until about mid-April mid um, before we close it. When you sign in into the scholarship, into this link here, it will filter out and show you only scholarships that, are, that you are eligible for. For example, it'll only show scholarships specific to your major, right? So if you're an engineering major, there's no need for you to have to filter through business major or specific scholarships. So it'll help you filter through the scholarships and help you apply for only those that you are eligible for. It'll do the same for any scholarships that require um, any type of specific GPA, right? A lot of these scholarships uh, do not require a social security number or an AB 540 status. So please do not limit yourself. Make sure to apply for scholarships. Um, you want to apply. When you go in here, it'll show you all the ones that you are eligible for based on all of the scholarship criteria. So you don't need to go filtering through a thousand to find the 100 scholarships that could meet your criteria. Um, so please make sure to apply. It is open to everyone. Um, it is also open to new students. We do have a few scholarships that are specifically for incoming students, incoming transfers, and there's a large volume of them that are eligible for continuing students. So please make sure to apply. The UndocuSpire Resource Center also has a great list of scholarships available. Please make sure to check it out. Um, it's actually one of my favorites. I generally go there all the time to try to find scholarships for students. So please make sure to take a look at it. Okay. Here is actually before we do this contact information, I wanted to walk through the process. To go through a couple of the questions on the DreamHack application. Okay, so just 
in order to save time here, I've already created a, a user. If you're a new student, then you would do this first time user if you've never applied. If you have, then you want to do this returning user. So for purposes here, I already created one. Okay, so once you log in, it'll give you two options. It'll give you the 22-23 school year or the 21-22 school year. I know when I was a student, I didn't know the difference, right? So pretty much you want to look down here. So you want our academic year starts with the fall term. So this is also tricky because it'll say July, but if you're taking summer classes, kind of seems like it would be this July 1, 20, July 1st, 2022. But if you're taking summer classes or for this current year, then you would do 21, 22. Although this is for next year's purposes, next year meaning fall 20, the start of fall 2022 term. So you would use 22, 23 school year. So yes. So the first view is really just your demographic information. If you don't have a driver's license, it's okay to leave it blank because you don't have a driver's license. There's nothing to do there. You are required to indicate whether you are male or female. And keep in mind that this is determined by the birth, the gender that you were given at birth. So you can enter your marital status. Okay. Here where it says your citizenship status. Okay, so it gives you three options, right? You a citizen, eligible non-citizen. In your case, you're going to do I am not a citizen or an eligible non-citizen, right? If you have recently received your permanent resident card or anything like that, then this would not be the application for you. Okay. So you're going to fill in your information. So I have a high school diploma. Here, keep in mind, it's if you have a first bachelor's degree. We have a lot of students who will indicate yes because they get excited saying, yes, I'm going for my bachelor's. But really what it's saying is if you already have one. And if you're an undergrad student, then you don't have one. So you would indicate no. If you're a graduate, then you would indicate yes. Or um, post-baccalaureate post student would also indicate yes. And so just for the purposes, we'll say sophomore, and we're going for our first degree. This, this here, these questions here on the highest level of education that your parents completed are mainly statistical, right? And they also play a role in determining your EFC. On the back end, there's a huge calculation where this plays a part. Um, so you just want to enter, and if you don't know your parents' um, highest level of their education, it's okay. You can just say other unknown. You want to add your high school. So you want to choose your high school, select it, go next. So college, you definitely want to add San Jose State. Um, you can either choose select it by name or San Jose State code, school code is 00115500. And there'll be a test with all of this. The housing is where do you plan on leave it and live it living. This is not a contract or anything like that. This is completely just so financially it knows how to award you. It rarely plays a, a role in determining your aid. Um, this is, and it does not, if I were to say I'm living on campus, this doesn't mean that I'm going to get charged for living on campus. It's completely statistical. Okay. So in my case, um, believe it or not, I was born before 1999. Right, so it's already going to consider me 
independent by age. Okay. So let's say I wonder if I can change this. Oh, this one. These questions here are what determines your dependency status. So if you're if you're not born before 1999, if you're not married, um, if you don't have a bachelor's degree. Right. Um, if you don't have any children or any dependents, right. if you're not currently in active duty, if you're not a veteran, if you're not an orphan or to the court, um, if you're not an emancipated minor. Okay. So if all of these questions are no, if you're not homeless, right, if all of these responses are no, then, or if you're not a yeah, foster care or the court. Um, the, if all of these are no, then you are considered dependent. If one of those questions was a yes, then you are considered independent. Okay. So now this is your tax filing information. So let's say, no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to work because in 2020, I was only 17. And, so then it wants to know okay all this information like your wages that i didn't work so i had zero income on this question on the cash savings and checking account you want to indicate the amount that you have after you pay all your bills right so for example if i'm filling this out on the first on the first is payday but in reality i know that i have to pay all my bills Right, so at the end, I'm going to have zero because really it'll be negative something, but let's say it'll be zero. So also your real estate, right? Keep in mind that here it says any investments, including real estate. When it is referring to real estate, it is referring to any home that you and your parents don't live in. So for example, the home that you and your parents live in is not part of this investment in real estate. If they have a second home, so if they have a home in Tahoe, then that home in Tahoe would count as real estate. But the home that they live in does not count as an investment. Okay? If you have a business or any type of investment, If you pay any child support, any of these good questions. Um, you know, combat pay. So you would just read these. Um, any any other money that you receive from elsewhere, you would risk answering these questions. pension again now it's the other way around if you received any child support you would put that on here if anybody has given you money um, to pay for your expenses this does not count if you live with your parents and they pay for your rent it that does not count it's if you don't live with your parents and they somebody is giving you money to pay for your expenses okay do you receive any type of compensation, let's say from disability benefits, um, if you have other money coming in from, you know, foreign income, if you have some account elsewhere, okay. and bills paid on, on your behalf. So this would be the same, you don't live with your parents, so living with your parents and then paying the electric bill is not them paying bills on your behalf. If you don't live with your parents and they send you money, then that would be, um, money that they're sending you on their behalf. The same would apply for this is um, if you're receiving any, you are receiving any of these um, SSI, any type of CalFresh, um, free or reduced lunches, right? Temporary assistance. If it's no to all of them, then you just put none of the above. This question here is if you are, if you did have a job and you are no longer working, right, then it just yes or no. Again, this one is totally um, statistical. If you don't know, then it's okay to say I don't know. 
now we're going on to because the the dream act considered me dependent now it's going to ask me questions on my parents if i were independent it would not ask me questions on my parents so let's say my parents are married um and they were married january of 2000 so if they don't and Lucy when you have a moment there's a question in the chat let me know when you're ready for me to read it out loud yeah go ahead I'll, I will go ahead and invite the student to ask the question yeah um so if a student receives like CalFresh does that directly affect how much aid they're going to receive like if they receive one of those government assistive programs no it does not affect how much a student is going to receive so at times what it does is it will skip certain questions. For example, if, if I had said, let's say CalFresh or the free school lunch, then it will skip certain questions. It has logic built in to skip certain questions, right? But chances are it will not affect the amount of aid um, with program with these programs. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So then we're going to enter my second parent. The email address you want to enter is um, your parents' email address. Now, if you ask me to enter my parents' email address, I know they don't have an email address, right? So they can either you can either enter what they have or enter an email address that they will have access to so that they can sign, so that they can sign this form, right? So I, just for the purposes here, I'm going to enter my email address here. the state where they live and they live here and let's say yes that they do live here before 2017. if your parents do not live in the country and your parents are over live overseas somewhere what you want to do is contact our office so you have two options you can either complete um, the dream act application using the income that they earn there or we can have a further discussion to determine if you are eligible for what's called a dependency override, right? Just keep in mind that your parents not living in the country does not automatically mean an approval for dependency override, but it's definitely a conversation that we should have if your parents do not live here in the country. Okay? So how many people live in the household? So this would include you, your parents, your siblings, um, anybody that they help, right, that they provide for more than 50%. So if you have, um, if they claim grandparents, then you would include grandparents, assuming that the grandparents are not getting other assistance, right? So let's say we're going to say five. Here, we want to know how many students are going to college, right? So let's say I'm the first one. In of these five, how many are attending college, right? So then the parents' income, so let's say my parents already filed, and let's say they do a 1040. And they filed married. So these questions, if you pull your parents' um, taxes, it'll show you on there, it'll tell you if they how they filed is the filed married joint. Um, there's only one tax return here now in the United States. Um, so it's only the 1040, right? Unless they live in a different country, right? Or if they are in Puerto Rico, then they would have a different one. But other than that, everybody else files a 1040. This is a question that we get a lot is, did your parents file a schedule one? So now when you complete your taxes, there is one form for the 1040, and then it'll have all these other forms behind it, right? 
on the top left corner, it will tell you if it's a schedule one, a schedule two, a schedule three, whatnot. If when you see that tax return, if you don't find a schedule one, then it means you don't have one. Or you can say, I don't know, which is fine also. Okay. A lot of students get stuck here because they're looking for a schedule one, but not everybody gets a schedule one. So let's say you have your taxes and you can't find one, um, but you don't want to say no because you're not sure, then it's okay to say I don't know. Okay. The adjusted gross income is a number that is there on the taxes. Okay, so if you look at line 11, you'll get, um, it'll show you the adjusted gross income. So let's say it's 24,000. Okay. So the same here in question 90 applies the same. If you don't have a schedule two, right, because not everybody has a schedule two, right? then it would this consider schedule two a zero so then what you would do is go on your main form the 1040 and look at line 22 right so here we're trying to figure out how much in how much in taxes were paid okay so if you don't have a schedule two then you're just going to take what's on line 22 from the 1040 so let's say it's a thousand because i like nice round numbers Here, we're going to split the parents' income, right? How much did, did mom, mom make versus dad make, right? So let's say my parent one made 20,000 and parent two made 25,000. There is no rule either on who is parent one and who is parent two, okay? If you choose to put mom in first, that's okay. If you choose to put in dad, then that's okay, okay? So there's no rule like parent one has to be mom or dad. Whomever is your, whomever you choose to put as parent one is who you put as parent one. Okay, so the same applies for them. As of today, what is their current balance of cash savings and checking? So again, after you pay all your bills, how much do you have left? Okay, so I'm going to say zero. I don't have anything left after I pay my mortgage and my taxes and my electricity and my food, everything I have to. Okay. Um, so here it starts repeating the same questions that we had on the student portion, right? What about your investments? Again, the home that your parents live in does not count as real estate. Okay. Any other investments? Okay. So just for purposes of this, and we're going to enter zero on all of these. The same with these other child support received. Any other taxes, any other veteran benefits, any other money that comes your way would be here. But if nobody else is giving you any money, then you would just indicate zero on everything. So this is again the same questions, right? Do you receive SSI, free lunch, um, any type of assistance, right? If it's a yes, then you would just indicate yes. As of today, are your parents a dislocated worker? I know this causes a lot of confusion for the parents when let's say for example, mom used to work, but now she's no longer working because she's taking care of the household, right? Um, so in that case, it would actually be no, right? Dislocated worker would be more if they were laid off or something like that, right? And again, it's really more statistical. Let's say we don't know. Here I would go in and sign it and submit it. I'm not going to submit it just because I don't want the department or I don't want um, CSAC to, to get it and wonder what it is, right? But we're going to submit it and then it'll give you a pop-up that'll ask you for your parents for your parents to log in, create a, a PIN number, log in, and then they will also sign it, okay? Does anybody else, else have another questions? I know it was a lot. Um, I don't know if this would be 
um, relevant, but say that a student's parent is in another country, how would they sign this form if they don't have access to a computer um, or any other type of electronic? So in cases like that is where we would really want to talk to the student to see if a dependency override applies. Because it's not feasible, right? Not every part of the world has access to the internet the way we do, right? So we would definitely talk to the student. Um, we, we would really just talk to the student to determine if they're eligible for a dependency override. Okay, thank So you. a dependency override is where we can override the dependency status um, where we talk to the student and they're in a situation where it's not so much that they can't get the information um, from the parents, it's more of their living situation with their parents, right? Okay. And dependency override also applies to students who uh, maybe live with their parents, but they're in a very adverse living situation, right? If it's unsafe for the student, to request this information, then uh, we could also look at dependency override. Okay. Thank you for that, Lucy. I don't think there's any more questions, so maybe we can highlight how folks can reach out to you, given that um, oftentimes this is, uh, you know, type of questions that come up are based by, you know, person by person, right? Um, yes. So yeah. So how can students reach you, Lucy, or how can uh, students get support with following their California Dream Act? So if you need any assistance, here is my email address, lucy.serato at sjsu.edu. Um, you can always, you're more than welcome to always come by the office also. We're here, we're open five days a week. Um, you can also contact me via phone, email. Um, you can contact the main line also. Um, and then if all of those fails, you can also contact the USRC and have them give me a nudge. Um, but the email, I would say, is the best way to get a hold of me. Thank you so much, Lucy. Um, all right. So I think, let me go ahead and turn on my camera. I don't think there's any more questions from folks. So let me. Um, uh, I want to thank you, Lucy, for um, for spending some time to talk to us about the California Dream Act um, and you know the different resources that are available. I know that the, this is a lot of information for folks, and um, some students may feel more ready, prepared to submit than others. So please do not hesitate to reach out to us if you're feeling stuck on a question. Um, if you are having um, trouble uh, accessing the form or knowing the status of your application, if you have submitted it, uh, please feel free to reach out to Lucy. Um, like Lucy mentioned, there's also some really great staff at the financial aid office that are readily available to um, answer any questions and to help um, problem solve any issues that may be uh, taking place. Um, other than that, um, again, visit our website at sjcu.edu slash Spartan. There you will find um, information about the resources, the different links to the, you know, the different websites, whether it's the California Student Aid Commission, the SJSU Financial Aid and Scholarship Office. Um, so we want to make sure that we have one location where we can, you know, direct you to the right place. Um, so again, feel free to reach out to us. We're also available here in person Monday through Friday. Um, in Clark Hall. We're right here on the first floor in front of EOP. So feel free to come by at any point throughout, uh, throughout the week. And um, we also have events coming up. So check out our event page on our website um, where you will get more information on how to register and um, how you can join. Um, and with that, again, thank you so much. And we look forward to seeing you all. Thank you.